you, Ridge Runners. Get the lead out. Buona fortuna, amici. Good luck. It's easy. Nasi no ha ambisena anko men. In the closing months of 1944, forward units of the American 5th Army were faced with the task of breaking through these ridges of the German Gothic defense line. On November 26th of that year, a deathly silence settled over this sector of the Italian front. For it was on that day that our third attempt to break the line failed. The story born out of that stalemate is the subject of this film, told from the personal viewpoint of those who were there. My name is Bill Putnam. I was lieutenant with the 85th. My name is George Weibel. I was a sergeant assigned to a transport unit. I witnessed the end of the war in Italy. My name is Ben Bush. I was a sergeant with the 86th. I am Hans George Hildebrand. I was a German general in northern Italy. My name is George P. Hayes. I was the commanding general of the 10th Mountain Division. This is the story of the climb to glory a combined German, American, and Italian account of the combat record of one of America's most unusual fighting outfits, the 10th Mountain Division. would never be capable of describing what happened here. But time has a way of helping a man put a lot of jagged memories back together again. But we were not the first division to come to Italy, nor did we, as one reporter put it, win the war single-handed. I have no doubt that our final story would have been a lot different had it not been for so many other people who had come here before us. We were not responsible for the victories at Anzio, Salerno, or Monte Cassino, or for the march into Rome. We were still in the States in those days. I believe it was Ernie Pyle who called it the Forgotten Front. We became a part of this tragic scenery on December 23rd, 48 hours before Christmas, 1944. We checked into Livorno exactly one month and one day after the Germans beat back our third attempt to scale their Gothic line. We were given lots of straw to bed down so that we could have insulation from the cold. And it seemed like a wonderful place because the sun was warm we were well dressed, we were being fed very well, we had lots of time to ourselves, and the idea of the front lines or warfare seemed very far away. We were a peculiar assortment. Our rank and file was made up of Austrian and German Schussboomers, Olympic ski champions, European and American mountain climbers, and what today's generation would probably refer to as Ivy League double domes. Harvard, Dartmouth, and Yale were well represented. An intelligence officer reported that the Germans were not impressed. On the 8th of January, this first contingent moved north through Florence to face the deadlock at the front. 
Ten days later, the rest of the division pulled into Livorno. We had come up from Naples uh, on landing craft and were camped in a uh, park. Uh, there were, the whole division was there, uh, except for parts of the 86th that were ahead of us and had been in the line. It was raining. Things were rather miserable and soggy, but uh, we were cleaning our equipment, uh, relaxing a bit, getting uh, rested up from the long trip in the ocean. It was wet, muddy, and uh, the foxholes that they had dug were full of water and very unpleasant. So they were quite anxious, I think, to get on with the show and get something moving. On February 4th, we were ordered my platoon plus one rifle platoon from the three rifle companies of our battalion into a makeup company that was supposed to do something. We weren't really sure what we were supposed to do. Uh, but uh, we had orders to go up the valley to our left and ascend the ridge that overlooked the town of uh, Pian Sinatico. We did this. We uh, got up to the top of the ridge in fairly good order, uh, and I put my uh, mortars in position to shell the town of Pian Sinatico, uh, and uh, we then waited for something to happen. Kurt, jetzt kommen die Amis von hinten. It happened. We did some damage to the town of uh, Piancinatico, but uh, it was all done with uh, my mortars, uh, the 60 millimeter mortars of uh, a line company. Uh, I remember rather enjoying the performance because uh, we were actually doing something. Uh, we felt uh, constructive. I'm sure the Germans had a different attitude, but we could see some Germans uh, in the town, and uh, I did my own observing, calling the, uh, the shots uh, uh, to create maximum damage. You, you can't really do a great deal of damage uh, against uh, uh, buildings with, with 60 millimeter mortars, but I tried. And I remember seeing, praying, just hoping I could uh, drop one round down the chimney of the building that uh, I was sure was their, uh, their headquarters. And we knocked an awful lot of tiles off the roof first, but I finally got one round right smack down that chimney. I felt so good to see the the flames and smoke shoot out the windows and the door. It was a, a glorious feeling. Uh, I guess it was uh, really the only satisfying event of the whole day for, for any of us on that, uh, that raid. For it was then that someone turned the tables on us. First I thought it was maybe our own artillery. But it was our friends down below lobbing shells all over the stupid ridge. For some of us, it was our first experience under fire wasn't very pleasant. Then a funny thing happened. We couldn't get enough of us to move out of the way. I kept wondering why the officer in charge didn't move, but no one budged. But the moment I got hit, everybody cleared out. Uh, why, leading the parade down was the guy in charge of the foolish raid, uh, and I never saw anybody move so fast in all my life, uh, as he did getting out of there after the uh, the hours that I'd spent urging him to do something, uh, 